All right, let's get to the big moment. Billy is back. But how did he reappear as a young boy after we watched him and his twin Tommy disappear at the end of WandaVision? And how is Billy, now going by Wiccan, supposed to continue his journey down the witch's road after he submerged every member of the coven, except Rio Vidal, into the mud at the end of episode 5? That cliffhanger was wild, and it left us wondering what could possibly come next. Episode 5 of Agatha All Along was intense, full of surprises and twists. But if we take a step back and look at everything that's happened across all the episodes aired so far, and even the trailer footage, there are some key moments we need to unpack. The arrival of Wiccan was something we were all waiting for, but Marvel still found a way to deliver a jaw-dropping reveal that keeps us hooked. Join me. Darkest hour. Now, as we wait for episode six, it's time to break down nine important things you need to know. From all the episodes aired so far and a few hints from the trailer, to get fully ready for what's coming. But before we jump in, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We dive deep into all things MCU. Mysteries, theories, Easter eggs, and right now, we're all about Agatha all along. So, hey. Shall we? So, stick around till the end of the video. Join me. And let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. Follow me, my friend. Billy's return to the MCU took us all by surprise. He showed up unexpectedly at Agatha's house at the start of Agatha All Along, alongside some witches from the coven as they ventured into the witch's road. But the real shocker came at the end of episode five, when it was revealed that this mysterious teen is actually Wiccan, William Billy Kaplan, or as many of us know him, Billy Maximoff. Here's the thing though, Billy was supposed to be gone. His story ended tragically in WandaVision when the Hex collapsed, taking him and his twin brother Tommy with it. In the MCU, they were just magical constructs, created by Wanda's powers. When her magic faded, so did they. Whoa. So how on earth did Billy come back? Especially in Earth 616, where his existence was tied to Wanda's magic. It doesn't seem possible, but here we are, seeing him back in human form as teen a.k.a. Billy. In the comics, Billy's soul was actually a fragment of Mephisto's soul that found its way into a boy named William Kaplan. William grew up, discovered his powers, and eventually learned about his true origins, finding his way back to his mother, Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch. Now, I wasn't sure how the MCU would weave this complex backstory into Agatha all along, but episode five dropped a few major hints. It's still just a theory, but bear with me. This could be the key to explaining Billy's return. You're so much like your mother. In episode five, we saw the coven perform a Ouija board ritual to summon spirits. Agatha herself got possessed by the spirit of her mother, Evanora Harkness. To me, this scene is crucial because it shows that spirits can possess living bodies in the MCU and what we saw during the third trial could be setting up the explanation for how Billy, AKA Wiccan, came back. The cliffhanger at the end of episode five was intense, but it left us with some big questions. Billy threw everyone, except Rio, into the mud. It seems like this could be the same kind of mud that swallowed Mrs. Har back in episode three. The difference is that this time, we actually watched Agatha, Lilia, and Jennifer Kale sink into it. But where was Rio Vidal during all of this? We didn't get a clear view of her. However, if we look back at the clues dropped since episode one, or if we recognize Rio as the Green Witch, or even as death itself, there's a good chance she was busy claiming Alice Wu's body. Unlike the two previous trials where we saw Coven members carrying out Mrs. Hart's body or trying to save Teen's injured one, in this episode, Alice's body was just left in the cabin. This might tie into the role of death, which Rio seems to embody, claiming the bodies of the deceased. 
In my opinion, Agatha, Lilia Calderu, and Jennifer Kale are still trapped in the Witch's Road and will somehow return for the next trial. We've seen plenty of footage and trailers featuring these three characters, and many of those scenes haven't even shown up yet in the first five episodes. Last one there is a nice person. But what about Mrs. Hart, AKA Sharon Davis and Alice Wu? They seem to be truly gone. Having failed their journey along the witch's road. In a previous video, I mentioned how the witch's road seems like a mystical dimension that doesn't directly connect to the real world. It changed us too. In one trailer, we even see Jennifer Kale crawling out of the ground but it looks like she's in Westview, not the Witch's Road. It's similar to the scene where Rio Vidal crawled out of the earth, emerging in the Witch's Road after being summoned by the Coven's spell. True witchcraft. If this theory holds true, it's only a matter of time before we see Mrs. Hart again, tending to her garden, relaxing, or busy with the Westview community, while the other members of Agatha's Coven remain trapped in the trials of the Witch's Road. After all, Sharon Davis doesn't need magic powers, right? So for her, the witch's road doesn't really matter. Maybe this is the end. The reveal that Teen is actually Billy leaves us with one big mystery. Who put the sigil on Teen, making him such an enigma for the first four episodes? Say again. instead of pointing fingers at Scarlet Witch, Mephisto, or even Agatha. I'm leaning towards the idea that Billy cast the sigil on himself. So far in The Witch's Road, Teen hasn't faced his own trial yet. The Witch's Road doesn't exist. You're lying. Am I? Meaning he hasn't gained any powers from it. But clearly, he already possesses great power. After all, the real Wiccan is right there. The sigil might have just been a way for Billy to hide his true identity from Agatha though she eventually figured it out, recognizing him as Wanda Maximoff's son. You're so much like your mother. But it seems like the whole sigil drama has come to an end. Remember what Agatha said when Teen asked her about the sigil? A sigil works on the witch who cast it as well. That's why we don't use them as much. They're super irritating. Sigils have a two-way influence. They affect both the object and the caster. This means the sigil also applied to whoever placed it and once it's no longer needed, the sigil's power fades away. So far, Teen is the only character we've seen affected by a sigil, which strongly suggests he's both the object and the one who cast it. But the sigil doesn't matter anymore, as its purpose is gone. Everyone knows now, Teen is Billy and Billy is Wiccan. But why would Billy put a sigil on himself? Simply put, Teen needed the coven members to enter the witch's road, and for an even bigger mission, he needed Agatha. The sigil was the only way to influence Agatha enough to get her into the witch's road, wasn't it? Was that there before? Lilia is one character who hasn't faced her trial in the witch's road yet. From the footage we've seen, it looks like her trial will have a Wizard of Oz theme. In that footage, we even catch a glimpse of Agatha transforming into the Wicked Witch of the West. The West? It makes sense. Agatha is the witch from America, which fits perfectly into that narrative. Meanwhile, it appears that Lilia will take on the role of Glinda, the good witch from the East. As for the other positions, it seems Rio will play the witches from the North and South, while Billy will embody the Wizard of Oz himself. This setup creates a fascinating parallel to the classic story hinting at how each character will embody aspects of these iconic roles in their own trials. It'll be interesting to see how this play on the beloved tale unfolds within the context of Agatha all along. So, hey. Shall we? Billy's trial is likely to close the plot holes from this series and reveal how he was able to rise again as the teen we see now. Imagine this, Agatha and Billy could find themselves in a morgue, possibly awakening from one of those cold metallic drawers. From the trailer footage, it seems that in this trial, Agatha will help Billy unlock his mind and memories. Last one there is a nice person. 
This moment could provide Billy with the opportunity to tap into and develop his Wiccan powers even further. Did you know that Agatha's role as a mentor, which we've seen in the comics, has gradually been revealed throughout WandaVision and Agatha all along? Join me. In previous episodes, Agatha attempted to teach Wanda about runes that could block magical powers, except for the witch who cast them. In Agatha All Along, she's genuinely teaching Billy, explaining how magic works in the MCU. We also saw a similar dynamic in Agatha's explanation of sigils to teen at the end of episode four. This mentoring relationship seems to be pivotal in Billy's growth as he navigates his trial, and I can't wait to see how it all plays out. As we dive into the nine episodes of this series, it's clear that each member of the coven will face their own trial. This leads us to one final episode that will tie everything together. The Trial of Death isn't just a dramatic title, it's a pivotal moment that will help us make sense of all the mysteries we've encountered, especially concerning Rio Vidal's existence. Remember that intense scene where Rio asked Agatha, do you remember why you hate me? I hate you. How long's it been, Agatha? Do you acquire the dark hold? That question carries a lot of weight, especially considering their potential past together. Some fans speculate that it's connected to the death of Nicholas Scratch and Rio's role in that event, or maybe it's simply about her claiming Nicholas's deceased body. However, if we examine the relationship between Agatha and Rio more closely, it seems their history isn't just filled with animosity. Throughout episode five, we saw Rio stand up for Agatha in various moments, indicating there might be more to their connection. I genuinely believe that Rio's presence in this series will challenge our understanding of good and evil, making us reconsider the lines between them. Episode five kicks off with a flashback to Agatha's past in 1693, giving us a deeper look into her character and making us think twice before judging her throughout the episode. I'm convinced we'll get another flashback that will shed light on her history. And for some reason, I strongly believe we'll see Evanora Harkness, Agatha's mother, make a return. Evanora Harkness of the Salemites. There's an unresolved tension from episode five that feels significant especially when Rio stood up for Agatha in front of Evanora's ghost. It seemed like Evanora knew Rio, which suggests a deeper connection. Yeah, well, her mother can't have her. No way! Now, if Rio Vidal is indeed death, this flashback could get even more interesting. In the Marvel comics, death is a powerful cosmic entity, and it's fascinating to imagine what could have happened between death and Agatha a witch who was tragically misunderstood and eventually labeled as evil by everyone, including her own mother. With the events of episode five, it's becoming increasingly evident that we are on the brink of a major revelation regarding Nicholas Scratch, Agatha's son. For those unfamiliar, Nicholas Scratch is not just a mere footnote in Agatha's story, he is a critical figure whose fate could profoundly alter how we view her character. In the comics, Nicholas is often portrayed as a complex character who struggles with his identity, caught between the legacy of his mother and his own ambitions. This internal conflict gives him a depth that could provide a fascinating storyline within the MCU. As we begin to unravel the mysteries surrounding him, we might witness a transformation in Agatha as well. Her relationship with Nicholas could serve as a catalyst for her redemption arc. Perhaps we'll see her grappling with her past decisions and the consequences of her actions, which could ultimately lead her to become a more sympathetic figure. If the show chooses to explore this dynamic, it could not only deepen our understanding of Agatha, but also pave the way for her to take on a more significant role in the broader Marvel narrative. As we approach the finale of Agatha All Along, it's clear that we're in for a breathtaking conclusion, filled with emotion and depth. As mentioned earlier, Rio will undertake the final trial to confront death, both in a tangible sense and as a metaphorical journey. This trial represents Agatha's opportunity to reconcile with the death of Nicholas Scratch, enabling her to evolve into a more compassionate and well-rounded character. 
This metaphorical reconciliation with death may also signify Agatha's need to come to terms with her relationship with Rio Vidal. But will we see the return of Wanda Maximoff in the finale? Given the numerous spin-off plans stemming from WandaVision, it seems likely that Scarlet Witch's comeback will be a gradual process. We might encounter Wanda in a different form, as the mystery surrounding her character remains a crucial element to sustain interest in upcoming projects. Additionally, we've heard whispers about the Agatha All Along spin-off being discussed at Marvel Studios. This follow-up project is expected to focus on the quest for Tommy, Billy's twin brother, which could further intertwine the fates of these characters. Moreover, Vision Quest has also been confirmed, promising to delve deeper into Vision's storyline. Rest assured, Wanda is poised to be a pivotal character in the next two Avengers films, and it's essential for us to catch glimpses of Scarlet Witch's presence in the MCU soon. So hang tight. I'll be here to guide you through this exciting journey. Thank you for sticking with me this far. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time to do so, so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Keep exploring, and I'll see you in the next one.